Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. My name is John Zimmerman, and I'm a health promotion professional and consultant working at the intersection of the built environment and healthy active living, especially active mobility. And this is my third entry into my Oklahoma City Congress for the New Urbanism series of profile videos, essentially a review of what I observed on the ground while in OKC for CNU 30 during the week of March 21st through the 26th, 2022. In this video, I compare and contrast three different active mobility routes connecting the downtown OKC area to the Wheeler District, an old airport redevelopment area on the south side banks of the Oklahoma City River. Along with me on this journey is Sarah Studdard with City Thread, based out of Denver, Colorado, and Sean Wright, a local OKC bicycle and pedestrian advocate. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's always wonderful to have you along for the ride, and I hope you enjoy our adventures as we head over to the Wheeler District. We'll start this off the Walker Avenue bike lane at Sheridan, which you may remember as the point where I turned off of Walker in my second OKC profile video titled, My Daily Ride to the CNU 30 Venue Site. As you can tell, it's just a painted lane in this section, but beginning at Reno Avenue, there is a little separation in the form of flex post delineators, which contributes somewhat to the comfort level in this section, but really, it's still far from best practice. Okay, I'd like to pause here at West Oklahoma City Boulevard and take us back to the CNU 30 venue site at the downtown Sheridan to take a look at the start of two additional alternate routes that I documented. We're gonna start out by rolling westward on Sheridan Avenue. Note the faded, painted bike lane here. And now we're gonna control the lane, merge over to the left and set up for a left turn on Ron Norick Boulevard heading southbound. Now note, this street will change names three times in the next quarter mile. It's really quite funny when you think of it. And over here is the beautiful Myriad Botanical Gardens on the right-hand side of the road. And a nice view of folks at the Botanical Gardens. And yes, now we're transitioning onto the Thunder Drive multi-use path, named for the OKC Thunder, the NBA basketball team that plays in the stadium on the left. For those of you keeping track, that street name change number one. Okay, let's pause here at the transit station for just a brief moment as we're now at another inflection point in our route selection process. What I propose we do at this point is veer to the left and get to the other side of the intersection. Are you on board? Of course you are, so let's do it. Now we're transitioning southbound onto South Robinson Avenue. So that's name change number two and our third name for this particular street. <laughs> Alrighty, that's done. So let's hit the pause button once again. Since we're now set up on the south side of Oklahoma City Boulevard and Robinson Avenue intersection, let's go back to our comfortable pathway at the transit station and see where that takes us. We're now heading west on this brand new, super smooth, physically separated asphalt pathway. 
and off to the left, looking south, you can see the edge of Scissortail Park, and we'll see much more of this park soon. Now, let this sink in. This used to be where I-40, that's Interstate Highway 40, ripped right through the downtown area. And now, it's this pathway, a transit line, a basketball stadium, a park, <laughs> a convention center. Well, you, you get the picture. And we'll see the newly relocated I-40 in just a few minutes. Okay, our little pathway ends here at Hudson, so we'll cross Oklahoma City Boulevard over to the south side and get staged up to take a new multi-use path westbound. Now we're traveling westbound on the OKC Boulevard multi-use path. Now, this is the path that has many local bike and pedestrian advocates upset because it's technically still illegal to ride a bike on a sidewalk in downtown. There were initial designs for protected cycle paths in the boulevard, and seemingly they were dropped without warning, according to the locals that I've spoken with. But as you can tell, this is a very comfortable facility as it is during our current conditions. Okay, we're back at Walker Avenue with Sarah heading southbound, but let's pause here for just a moment and head back over to Robinson Avenue and Scissortail Park with Sean to explore our options for navigating over our first major barrier, the Interstate 40 Highway installation. As we roll southbound on South Robinson, you'll notice the new convention center on the left and Scissortail Park on the right. Up ahead, you'll notice that we have a little physical separation with some flex post delineators and, oh, check this out, a physically separated raised ramp at the roundabout here at the entrance to the park. Now, Sean has a surprise for us off to the right, but we'll come back to that. But first, we'll continue southbound on Robinson. <laughs> but wait, <laughs> what, the bike lane just ends? Seriously, we are literally at Scissortail Park and the convention center, and the bike lane just ends as we attempt to navigate past barrier number one, I-40. This is a massive oversight and an unacceptable current condition that must be corrected as soon as possible by the city. Okay, yeah, we survived. But trust me, we're not out of the woods yet with this street. But let's pause here for just a moment to explore what's happening over on Walker Avenue with Sarah. I get the sense that conditions over there might be just a little bit better and a good model for Robinson Avenue. Okay, here we are headed southbound on Walker Avenue again towards I-40 and the river. More flex posts with minimal separation? Appreciated, but not enough, folks. Ah, nice, here we go. A little more separation does make things feel much more comfortable and is much appreciated. See, it wasn't that hard. And once this space is secured, more robust protections other than flex posts can be installed. Here's looking back at Sarah and the downtown and a quick look and listen to I-40. Notice how this is definitely an improvement over what we saw and felt over on Robinson. But can we do even better? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Remember how I said Sean had a surprise for us? Well, let's go back over to the Robinson Avenue roundabout and check it out. We're now officially turning into Scissortail Park and we'll be turning southbound onto the Scissortail Park Promenade.
Whoa, now we're talking. Welcome to the Skydance Bridge over I-40. end of the line. <laughs> the Lower Scissor Tail Park and Promenade are still under construction, but should be opening up relatively soon. Here's the view from the southern edge of the park and promenade, looking north towards the Skydance Bridge and the downtown. This is all quite nice and bodes well for an all ages and abilities connectivity over the barrier that is I-40. But wait, we still have one more barrier in the Oklahoma River, which is literally right here. So continuing southbound on South Robinson, we have to once again control the lane and cross over the river. Thankfully, there were not very many cars racing up and down the street while we were riding. At least not at this moment, but just wait, we'll hear them soon enough. And boom, just like that, we're at the entrance to the south side of the river park and trail system. Let's catch up with Sean for an update on a future vision for an extension of the Scissor Tail Park Promenade down to and over the river. So imagine eventually if there's a pedestrian bridge across here, to where you can walk down that promenade, cross the street, uh, come, come down another sort of promenade-like structure, and walk across the uh, pedestrian bridge right into this park. And south of the river is the, the historic uh, Hispanic area, and so you have a lot more Hispanic people using the, the park down here, and they go up, they go up to that park too. But if they could walk from here up, up all the way into that park, so much the better for everyone. It wasn't that hard to find the source of the race car noise. <laughs> a shop literally across the street from Scissor Tail Park and the Promenade is supplying modified custom exhaust sounds that we love so much. Oh joy. Thanks guys. Okay, enough of that. Let's reconnect with Sarah to see how the Walker Avenue bike lane handles the river crossing. Uh, back to minimal separation and flex posts. No additional comment needed. Now we're at the north entrance to the river trail and park, although there doesn't appear to be a bike and pedestrian specific facility to access the trail. Once again, we're at our enhanced separation. Cities, do more of this. It's seriously not that hard. Just narrow the travel lanes, which encourage motor vehicle drivers to slow down a few miles per hour, which is exactly what you should be doing anyway. Here's a quick look down at the North Side River Trail from the bridge, and now we're crossing over the river. And here's a glance back at Sarah and the city, not too far off in the distance. Okay, we were successful navigating past the barrier that is the river. Now, where's our pathway down to the river? Well, not here, but there could be one. Yeah, it's over here, with no obvious way to access this beautiful pathway. Clearly more work is needed here, but I will cut the city some slack because this is clearly brand spanking new can literally see that the sod has just been laid down. Here's the connection with the South Side River Trail. Nice recumbent bike. Well, what do you think? This is great. Pretty good, eh? So, they definitely have the workings of the connectivity. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Um, obviously, we'd love to see that sort of connection duplicated 
on each of these bridges. Yep. And uh, there's an opportunity also further down on the other side of Wheeler where there's an abandoned rail track. Oh, wow, yeah. And uh, I have to think that they're getting prepared to make that a, a bridge, a pathway bike and ped bridge as well. Um, I cannot confirm. I may or may not have walked across it yesterday. <laughs> So up ahead here is uh, some old abandoned train tracks. Yes. Is that also going to be a potential? That has been approved, but not funded, to be a, converted to a pedestrian bridge. Okay. There's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a design in and everything. It's like a two or four million dollar design. Yeah. Yeah. Piece of cake. Well, it's been it's been approved for like five years, so <laughs> it hasn't happened yet. So yeah. Ferris wheel. In addition to the Ferris wheel is a beautiful public space and picnic area with the signature Wheeler District OKC sign with the city as the backdrop. And here we are back at the runway at the Wheeler District. So this is still runway. They tore out the runway and then they, just, they kept the alignment down there, but this is still runway yeah. from the old downtown air park. My dad used to work at Tinker Air Force Base and they would practice touch of goes on this runway. And he, he used to tell me that how he hated it because they would have to pull up before the skyline. <laughs> and it was always a pretty, uh, pretty uh, you know, dramatic situation. Yeah. But, and what uh, type of uh, airport was this? Uh, it was just a it was just a private airport, okay. uh, small small commercial planes, helicopters. What was once an airport is now an amazing place to live, relatively close to downtown. And as you just experienced, it was a pretty pleasant ride with a couple different options that will only get better as additional facilities and enhancements come online. In a future video, I will take you along for an in-depth exploration of the Wheeler community, including a special guided tour by Victor Dover, a principal of the firm that is responsible for the design of Wheeler. Thank you so very much for joining me on this Activity Asset video journey. If you enjoyed it, please give it a like, leave a comment down below, and share it with a friend. And if you'd like more content like this, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the channel. Just click on the button below and ring that notifications bell. Also, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention two additional ways that you can support my efforts. The first is my Active Town store, where you can get some fun Streets Are For People swag, and the second is my Patreon account. Buying an item or two at the store and or becoming a patron by making a modest monthly contribution really helps to keep the momentum of my culture of activity for all ages and abilities movement rolling. Well. That's all for now. So until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.